Hey guys, welcome to round seven of the 2018 Hair Scramble season. This uh, race was held in Cummins, Michigan, at the and it was a wicked woodsman hair scramble. And right off the bat, J Class has all kinds of crazy action going on. This guy in the white there uh, was actually a C Class rider. A C Class rider. He should have been starting with us, but. Uh, yeah, it was his first uh, first race out, and he didn't really know what he was doing. Uh, he was actually lined up in the right spot, but uh, he took off with J-Class, who was not lined up in the right spot. Once again, I got a horrible start. Last one off the line, but this time I got it on the second kick instead of, you know, six or eight. So I wasn't too far behind. Um, like Ken says, I seem to seem to like uh, to go ahead and let everyone take off and just give me uh, more of a challenge to try and pass everyone. Speaking of Ken, Ken Reichenbach is in the yellow jersey, one bike ahead of this guy in the, the red jersey. Um, he has been absent from our series since the first round, or since after the first round. If you watch my videos, you'll recall that uh, a week before the Portland race, which was round two, um, Ken and Jeff, Tony Down, uh, Dak, myself, Dave, his son Logan, and uh, I forget, uh, well, Kyle, uh, Kevin's son was out there with us. Um, we went and practiced in Portland, and Ken took a, a small jump a little bit wrong, came down funny, and uh, ended up breaking his collarbone, three ribs, and puncturing, uh, puncturing his lung. So uh, it's been a, a long road back uh, from recovery for him, and this is his first race back, so it was really exciting seeing him back out here. I was only two points behind him in the point standings, which, you know, I have to be honest, is a little embarrassing since he literally raced one race and still managed to stay in front of me in points. Um, so, if you saw right there, um, you might want to rewind. That guy went down. Uh, I'm not really sure what happened. It, I don't know if there was a tree stump there or what, but he crashed right in front of Ken. I was very concerned during the race that that was Ken. Um, but uh, as you saw right going into the woods here, I passed Ken real quick. He asked the guy if he was okay, he gave him a thumbs up. So I wasn't stopping because I saw him give the thumbs up that he was okay. Um, and now we are on the second lap. Um, I, I decided to skip the first lap footage after the grass track because this track was so tight, so compact that uh, it was really hard to pass anybody. And so it, we were held up for most of the first lap. Um, and it, really the footage from the second lap was better. I was able to get into a groove and uh, you know ride at my own pace for at least a good half to three quarters of the lap. I get hung up behind a couple guys, but uh, I get around them pretty well. So I decided to go with the second lap footage and uh, skip the first. So, as you saw there, going into the woods, I got, I just got past Ken, and he is behind me. Um, right now, he's behind me. He will come back into the picture. Don't let it fool you. It's his first race back. He said he was taking it easy, but the man was on a mission, and he was riding well. And, like I said, it was super exciting to see him back, and... Even in the heat, he, he went the whole time, and uh, yeah, I was really happy for him that he was, he was able to get back, and, uh, and he rode like he hasn't been gone at all, <laughs> so good, good for him, 
Uh, I'll tell you right now, he ended up getting second place. Um, so, yeah, he's he's a man on a mission. Uh, I can't, I don't know what place he's in right now as far as points, but if I remember correctly, before this race, he was in 15th. And, yeah, there's a very good possibility if he continues to perform the way that he is capable of, he could very well get at least back into the top five in points uh, before this season's over. And, uh, boy, what a comeback that would be. So, you know, I, I wish him all the best. Good luck, buddy. Um, so here we're coming up behind this guy and you know like I said it was super tight hard to get around guys um, basically your your only option on this track was to just kind of fall into the rhythm of the guy in front of you um, unless you were were blatantly faster you know I'm uh, it's pretty rare that you'll ever see me rev my engine or start hooting and hollering at people unless I'm really being held up and this guy wasn't really holding me up too bad so I decided I'd just stick behind him uh, you know try and just run a solid pace and, uh, and get around him whenever I could so track conditions today um, pretty similar to Toledo um, I, I don't know if they got any rain leading up to the race. It wasn't terribly dusty, but at the same time, the track was so tight that it was really hard to get any real speed. So, you know, it's hard to say how dusty it would have been had we been able to get some speed going. Um, but it was 91 degrees, so it was only a couple degrees off of where we were in Toledo. And it was hot. Um, you know, it, it just one of those heats that just sucks the life out of you. I got lucky today. Um, well, I, I'll say lucky, but... Uh, you know, at the same time, I, I do feel like, you know, my skills are improving, so maybe it's just that I'm riding a little better than I have been in the past, but uh, I only fell once today, and I'll put that, I put that in the bloopers at the end, um, so only falling one time is a huge accomplishment for me, um, you guys, if you watch my videos, you know, I, I tend to crash somewhere in the neighborhood of six times a race. <laughs> so, um, I knew in these conditions, as hot as it was, that if I was putting the bike down on the ground, I was not going to make it through this race. So, now I've gotten back, or I've gotten around that guy, he let me by, um, and I clearly have picked up the pace. Uh, it's time to start tracking some guys down. And right there, there is Dave. Dave Palmer. Um, if I remember right, on the first lap going through the scoring, he was in either go, second Dave! or third place. And I'm going to yell at him here. Hey, buddy! I, uh, I can't remember exactly what happened to Dave. Um, I think if I am not misinformed, if I remember right, I think he he had taken a fall, landed on a rock or something, and what whatever happened right after he let me by there, um, he ended up puking and. Basically, it was the end of his race. Um, he finished up the second lap, and he parked it. So, that's a bummer for Dave. I know the last two or three races now, he has not been... He's been getting the whole shot, like always. I mean, he's, he's really good off the line. He's really fast, but... Um, just little things have been catching up to him during the races and taking him out early. And, 
Yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> it's it's going to be a, a fun point series to watch come to an end here this season. Um, you know, he, he was holding on to first going into this race, and now I think he's been shuffled back to fourth. Um, he finished 12th in this race um, with his DNF. Uh, kind of a lucky break, I'd say, really. Um, I, if I remember right, we had 15 or 16 guys in our class today, which is definitely the smallest uh, smallest grouping that we've had for the C class this year. Um, typically, we've got anywhere between, I'd say, 21 and, and roughly 30. Um, so uh, 15 is definitely definitely uh, a small group for us um, probably the reason I did as well as I did um, but at the end of the day we'll, we'll take whatever position we can get and uh, yeah this was this was a race I was I was looking forward to leading up to it um, last year if you watch my videos I I was at this race and I did not I did not make it very far. Um, I had tried to to tighten up my head bearings and it, just to give the handlebars a little more resistance, um, and I made it basically less than one lap and my steering locked up basically I could still turn a little bit but it took so much effort to turn those handlebars that uh, there was really no way that I could even come close to competing so after one lap I, I pulled off the track and, and sat the rest of the race out now as you can see here the terrain is, you know, obviously it's tight, but basically everywhere you look, um, I, I don't think you can pick it up on the camera, but there, all these little tree shoots sticking up out of the ground that are, you know, roughly an inch around, on our trail there are trees that have been cut off right at the ground. Um, you know, pr it probably one of my least favorite things in the world. Uh, it, these trees stick up just enough to make you lose traction, and if you're not careful, you will end up in the, the bark. <laughs> so, um, yeah, <laughs> these, these little tiny tree stumps sticking up, you know, the first lamp coming through, they were sticking out of the ground a quarter inch, half inch. By the end of the race, there were some that were sticking up six, eight inches out of the ground, you know, just from the, 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 uh, sand and soil being torn away, you know, from the tires going over it. So made it very challenging and that's actually the only reason that I crashed this race um, you, like I said you'll see it right at the end I I hit a stump and it, I, it, the stump isn't what made me crash but the the shock from the stump kind of pushed me off to the left just a little bit and I caught my bars on a tree and it just kind of threw me to the ground real quick it was not a fast fall it wasn't a hard fall but I'll tell you what, that one that one time picking the bike up off the ground really wore me out. So I was glad that it was the only time that I crashed this race. Um, what I don't think, well, I guess there is a, a small clip in here where I kind of let you know what's going on. Um, I'll, I'll let you know before we get to it. I'll just tell you right now. Um, I ended up losing my rear brakes uh, about halfway into the third lap my brakes started fading dramatically and by the time I finished the third lap my brakes were completely gone and I, I 
nursed the bike around a fourth lap, just trying to to salvage every point that I could. Um, my goal this season is to try and get a top 10 in points. Um, last year, I was 21st in points, I think, at the end of the season. So, you know, if I can improve from, we'll just say that it was 21st, if I can improve from 21st up to 10th, um, I would be very, very happy. Um, and so, yeah, at this point, we're getting to the end of the season now, and it's really crunch time. So, I'm doing everything I can. If my bike is running, I am trying to finish every one of these races, and I couldn't finish the whole race today, but I did go two hours, and I knew that uh, going two hours, you know, it wasn't worth pushing it one more lap. Um, it, I had to slow down so much on that fourth lap that it was really becoming a struggle just to ride the bike. Um, you know, when you do these races long enough, you really do start to figure out that the faster you go, the easier it is to ride. And so even though it's counterintuitive and, you, you know, you're in tight sections and you really don't feel like riding fast, you know, it takes so much more energy to fight these bikes through the woods and stuff when you're creeping along. So if you can, if you can maintain your speed, you will do better. It'll be easier to ride and you'll be faster. So, you know, it's it's one of those things where could I have nursed it through one more lap? Probably. But you know, as much energy as it was sucking out of me to try and fight it through the woods, it really just wasn't worth, you know, potentially one or two more positions. Um, looking back at the, at the race standings, um, I'm not sure where I was uh, when I pulled off as far as my position and whether or not continuing would have done me any good or not. Um, I think I may have lost one position by stopping when I did. And, you know, it, <laughs> after saying I was trying to salvage every point that I could, um, the bike was still moving. I, I want to say I should have stayed out there, but I also think I made the right call by ending my race when I did. Um, I, I felt like there was a good chance I was going to end up getting hurt if I kept going. Um, just just from the sheer exhaustion from fighting the bike in the heat um, when you can't move through these woods to create your own airflow in this kind of heat. It, it, it's just too much. Um, it'll, it'll consume you pretty quick. And it was hot. I mean, like I said, it was 91 a day. We had a really great breeze out in the grass track, you know, there were 10 to 20 mile an hour winds. But once you got into this stuff, there was no breeze at all. And it was so tight that it was almost impossible to even create your own breeze. So it really was just, you know, a, a, a much better call than just end my race when I did. But I will say, you know, like I said, I, I was looking forward to this race before we got here. And I wasn't, I wasn't crazy about this race at all last year. If you recall, this, this race is the reason I cut three and three quarter inches off my bars. Um, and you can see why. I mean, I'm, I'm banging trees all over the place, mowing them down with my handlebars, even with them as narrow as they are. And I've got to think that my bars are probably narrower than anybody else's out on this track. And it's still a struggle. So, right here, there, I finally let Ken by. Um, to be perfectly honest, I didn't know he was there. Um, when I passed Dave, or when he let me by, I thought that 
he had just jumped right in behind me and so the whole time that I was in front of Ken I was hearing a two-stroke behind me I assumed that it was Dave and so knowing that I had caught Dave I figured that I was holding a fast enough pace to not worry about getting out of his way and Ken, obviously, he was shooting video of this race. He said that he got some great footage of me. So, um, watching his video, I can't wait to see it because I know, you know, you can't see what my feet and my body were doing during this race. Um, my camera that I've been mounting on my handlebars uh, to get the shot of my body and what I'm doing on the bike, uh, I completely forgot to turn on until I want to say I was, I, I want to say I was into my third lap by the time I finally turned it on. And again, you know, the footage that I'm using is not from the third lap. So, um, there's, there's no, <laughs> no way for you guys to see what was going on, but, um, Ken did make the comment, he's like, you know, holy smokes, man, you had a couple close calls there, and, and I did, I mean, this whole race with the, the tree stumps and the roots and the logs and the saplings and stuff sticking out of the ground, I mean, I was banging off of just about everything out there. But, for the most part of it in the one fall, I kept it on two wheels, and that's all that matters. <laughs> when you're in terrain this tight, you are going to hit stuff, guaranteed. That's why you've got the bark busters on your handlebars. So, you know, I was using the bike the way it was set up to be used, and just plowing stuff over. And yeah, I had a couple close calls where there were stuff catching my boots and trying to rip my feet off the pegs and, you know, I, <laughs> I just fought through it. So I am looking forward to seeing Ken's video just to see, you know, hopefully he posts the section where he was following me. But, uh, you know, I let him by and... You know, he he was not revving at me. I he didn't tell me that I was holding him up at all. But uh, as you see, he's gone. And I think realistically, because I thought that Dave was behind me, I was riding at a pace that um I don't want to say I couldn't maintain that pace, but. I could tell, you know, just like Ken said, I was I was having a couple of really close calls, um, and I started when I let Ken by. I had started to feel like I needed to kind of back it down just a little bit to avoid crashing because I could tell riding at the pace that I was that I was starting to run a little bit low on energy. You know, my heart rate had been up for quite a while fighting through these woods. And so I thought it was really just best, even if it was Dave, to just go ahead and let him go and just try and keep up with him. And then when I went to let him by and it was Ken, <laughs> surprise, surprise, it was him the whole time, and Dave was nowhere to be seen, so, um, yeah, he, he kind of surprised me, I didn't realize that he was there, but, uh, you know, it is what it is, and, and that's really Ken's specialty, he just sits back, he stays calm, and he just waits for you to either let him by, or for you to make a mistake, and he'll just sneak right by you, and... Yeah, it, you know, he conserves energy that way, and it, he ends up in first or second place. <laughs> so, yeah, let, I, again, congratulations, Ken. Super, super good to have you back. Um, Jeff, Pony Down, was at this race. Haven't seen him since Twin Bay. 
Um, I had a little bit of footage of him, but um, he, I, I only saw him during the first lap, and again, because I didn't use that footage, you didn't, didn't get to see him, but uh, he had gotten hung up by a, a rider that went down or something, and, and uh, we snuck past him, and that was the last I saw of him. He ended up doing two laps also with Dave, and if I remember, he finished 10th. So, you know, I, <laughs> to get 10th place with only running two laps, I, I'm sure Jeff was pretty happy about that. Um, but we got Valley coming up this Sunday, and I'm really looking forward to that track. Um, it's one that I raced twice last year, so I I don't want to say I know the track, but I'm more comfortable there than I am at some of the places like this where, you know, I, I raced this last year, but I only got one lap in, and I barely got that one lap in, so it's not a track that I know well. Um, Valley last year was my two highest finish races, so um, I, I can't say that it's necessarily one of my favorite tracks, but I do tend to perform well there, and um, I don't know, maybe it suits my riding style, but so we're, I'm looking forward to that race. I think Jeff is planning on being there. He didn't uh, didn't want to commit to anything, but you know I'm I'm hoping that he shows up. I'm almost 100% certain that Ken will be there for for Valley. Um, Dave is gonna be uh, scrapping for points. He's he's gonna have to bring his A game for the rest of the season. Uh, can't can't be not showing up to any races, and he's he's gonna have to bring it. So, like I said, this is it's gonna be an exciting finish to the season this year, and you know everybody's just gonna be really really going after it. Um, I all I can say is that I hope that I can perform well enough to get into that that 10th place or better in points uh, right now I think I'm 14 points out of 10th place um, and you know getting into the 10th into the the top 10 is is pretty difficult because those guys show up <laughs> you know you can you can pretty easily move from 20th to 15th um, if, with, with just one or two decent finishes, uh, but when you're trying to get into the top ten, I mean, those are the guys that show up for every race. They're consistent, so, you know, it, it, it makes it pretty tough. So here we are. This is the start-finish line, or the, the finish line, I should say. So there's one full lap. Now this guy, I had let go. I don't know how he's out here riding with a water pack. He's a madman, and I can tell by what's going on here that he was getting exhausted. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things when you're dehydrated, your motor skills start really failing you, and you can tell he was really struggling. <laughs> But, uh, you know, he was okay, and it was kind of funny to watch, so I figured I'd leave it in there. Now, I'm going to say something here. brakes are gone. They're gone, gone. Yep. <laughs> so that was, that was about, well, maybe a little more than halfway through the third lap, and my brakes had been fading. Since the end of the second lap, they, I had started to feel my left hand rear brake getting soft, and you know, I, I just left this in here because I was still pushing it through the grass track section. I had enough traction on my front tire 
to uh, to be able to use the front brake a little bit. So I was still having some fun where I could. What ended up actually happening that caused my brakes to go was the bleeder screw right here is where I crashed. <laughs> Uh, the bleeder screw for my master cylinder actually stripped out and so every time I would hit the brakes it was pushing fluid out so after a couple laps I had no brake fluid in the master cylinder anymore so that's what happened now here you go eighth place uh, best finish I've ever had and yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed the video I look forward to seeing you guys at Valley, and yeah, go ahead and hit the like, bu like button, subscribe if you want, and uh, yeah, like I said, hope hopefully we'll see you guys at Valley. Thanks for watching.